way you lay your head, the way you call your home. I don't know where you eat your meals, the way you talk on the phone. I don't know if you got a cook, a butler, or a maid. I don't know if you got a yard with a hammock in the shade. I don't know if you got some shelter, say a place to hide. I don't know if you live with friends in whom you can't confide. I don't know if you got a family, say a mom and dad. I don't know if you feel love at all, but I bet you wish you had. Come and go with me to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. It's a big, big house with lots and lots of room. A big, big table with lots and lots of food. A big, big yard where we can play football. It's my father's house. All I know is a big old house with rooms for everyone. All I know is lots of land where we can play and run. All I know is that you need love and I've got a family. All I know is you're all alone, so why not come with me? Come and go with me my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. It's a big, big house with lots and lots of room. A big, big table with lots and lots of food. A big, big yard where we can play football. A big, big house. It's my father's house. So friends, good morning. Morning. Welcome to worship this day at Williamsville United Methodist Church. Happy Father's Day. And as we celebrate Father's Day, we also celebrate grads. So grads and dads today. Um, as you saw on the announcements, there are some things happening in the life of the church, and we could use some help. So on Wednesday, Chevetta's Chicken Barbecue. If you don't like chicken and you don't like barbecue and you can't eat on Wednesday afternoon or evening, you could still donate to Seneca Street, so I encourage you to do that. But if you love Chevetta's Chicken Barbecue or you want to help, you can come over to the church a little bit before 4 and um, pick up your dinner or help out, okay? Other things that are happening. There is an opportunity to usher over the summer for the 10 o'clock service. If you would like to do that, I would appreciate the help. I have a couple of guys that are signed up. Anyone can do this, and so it's basically a greeting kind of thing. Families could do it. One person could do it by themselves. Um, if you happen to land on a communion Sunday, you're going to also help serve. So if you want to help in that way, that would be fantastic. I think Pastor Greg has something from the youth. What do you think? Yard sale time. <laughs> attempt this we want to support them in that and friends as you do I know some of you are asking me can I can I drop stuff off yet not quite okay so they're waiting till July for that just so that we're not um, taking up a lot of space and holding a lot of things here just in case we need Fillmore Hall for something so just hang tight with that they'll give you a date for drop-off and they may even do pickups there's some rumor going around about that so let's see what happens friends as we join in worship together today there's lots to celebrate. 
grads and dads the opportunity to celebrate the coming of summer, um, to just be in the presence of God in worship. And so once again, I invite you to be here. I invite you to be present with God and to sing songs of praise, to lift your heart and your mind in prayer, and to bump into one another and say good morning. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, let us stand in body or in spirit and call upon God in this time of worship. When we long for the special effects we think life should offer, it is enough for us that God comes in a soft summer shower when we, our hearts, are cracked by the drought of doubt. It is enough for us that God opens the fountains of faith for us when our senses are deadened by the sales pitches of our culture. It is enough for us that God wraps us in the silence of grace. God is enough for us. God is enough for me. Friends, let's sing together. It's the song of the redeemed rise from the African plain. It's the song of the forgiven drowning out the Amazon rain. The song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire. It's every tribe, every tongue, every nation, a love song born of a grateful choir. It's all God's children singing glory, glory.
as we lift up our hands will you meet us here as we call on your name will you meet us here we have come to this place to worship you god of mercy and grace it is you we adore it is you praises are for only you the heavens declare Friends, I invite you to join your voices and hearts with mine as we pray together. We come seeking God in mighty earthquakes. We come listening for God in resounding thunder. We come expecting God in sweeping victories. Yet God is found in a baby's touch. Yet God speaks in silence. Yet God is found in the least of these. Save us, O God, from our aimless wandering. Save us, O God, from our idols. Save us, O God, from our self-induced chaos. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Friends, let's take a moment for personal and silent confession. Hear these words of assurance. The good news of God's love for us 
not in the earthquake, not in the storms, not in the mighty deeds, but in the silence, in the gentle touch, in the quiet rain, God says again, you are my beloved. I love you. And all of God's people said, amen. Friends, as a sign and act of reconciliation to God and to one another, we show signs of peace this day. So I remind you that the peace of Christ is within you. Let us share that with those around us. So friends, as we continue in this time of worship, we recognize graduates and we uh, share some names that we received and, and my apologies if we have forgotten anyone and if you are graduating this year and I have missed you, I congratulate you and you need to tell me, <laughs> okay? So let's see, who do we have? From college, we have Richard and Stephen and Mark. Um, in high school, um, Matthew Domino, who is um, Barb Hexamer's grandson, is graduating from Skinny Atlas High School. And then here locally, we have Jacob Knapp at Will North, Jill Rohde at Clarence High School, Aaron Starks at Will North, Miranda Swenson at Will South. And I think that's all I know about. Did I miss anybody? No, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at you guys. Nobody's graduating this year, right? Okay. All right. So Jillian wanted to be with us today, and she was going to speak, and she was all prepared, and she's sick. Bummer. But she had sent me the words that she was going to share with you, so I would like to speak on her behalf today. Obviously, I'm not Jillian Rohde. She says, hello, I'm Jillian Rohde, and I'm a graduating senior from Clarence High School. This fall, I'll be going to SUNY Binghamton University, majoring in biology on the pre-med track. I plan to eventually become an obstetrician. I'll also be minoring in Chinese studies to better connect with my heritage. I'm sorry to be leaving WUMC for most of the next few years. The church has been an important part of my life with its tight-knit community. Some fond memories I have are my earliest years at youth group. I joined when I was in fifth grade, which seems like a lifetime ago. I think this is especially in my mind as I remember being the youngest in the youth group and thinking that the upperclassmen were absolutely ancient. As someone who is now quote, quote unquote ancient, I have to say I feel both like a child and a senior citizen, though everyone here will disagree with the latter remark. Other events that stick out include the youth choir. My parents always had to force me to go as I'm neither a confident singer nor a good one. Miss Wendy and Miss Judy were both in charge. We could practice on Wednesday nights right before the adult choirs and we always left with snacks. I don't think this is true for the adults. <laughs> they don't get snacks, she's saying. Although along the same line, there was also the annual pool party at Miss Judy's house. Instead of a pool party, the adults had the annual brunch in the spring and it was 90% casseroles every single time. I'll be missing those casseroles and the people who made them when I go to Binghamton this fall. Cafeteria food can't beat home cooking. Along the same vein, I'll always return to WUMC. So thanks, Jill, for those words this morning. Friends, we are excited for our graduates, and so we send them forth with blessing. And I have words of wisdom for you. As your classes and grading are now complete, may you strive toward excellence in all you do. As the speeches conclude, may your voices rise up to pronounce justice and peace in the world. As the fanfares cease, may you sing of joy even in dark and lonely places. As the applause quiets, may you celebrate and lift up those around you. As you graduate, may your achievements grow and cause growth in your communities. And may we all know the overwhelming blessings of the one who created all things. Blessings to our graduates. Friends, as we turn to God in a time of prayer and offering, I'm going to give you a heads up for next week. We're going to try offering again, like, remember we used to come forward and there'd be like a song and we'd walk and move? We're going to try it, okay, next Sunday and throughout the summer and see how that goes. 
As we're thinking of the way in which we offer ourselves back to God right now, we, we, that coming forward in the 9 o'clock service was an act of giving something up to God. And so while we're seated and while we're singing our prayer, praise song, we're reminded that we offer ourselves up to God. And so as we do that, we'll be reminded of those things. During prayer time, you could text me this morning, although I've lost my phone for the moment, so I might not get it. <laughs> but we can uh, usually text in real time, and um, it comes in. You can put something in the Facebook chat if you're online with us today, and we will pray for those things that you lift up in joy or concern. In joys, we have Father's Day and our graduates. Summer, the gift of summer. Under concerns, we continue to lift up peace in our world, especially in the Ukraine. We lift up folks that we've had on our prayer list for healing for Ryan and Pete and Lita. And you may have others. So as we go to God in prayer this morning, let the beginning of our prayer be a song of our hearts as we remain seated and sing together. Friends, let's continue in that spirit of prayer. Amazing, amazing God. Thank you for the gift of worship this day, for the time we have to be with you and to be with one another. God, we are celebrating, as you know, those who are graduating and the dads in our midst today. Thinking of fathers everywhere. And we uh, remember we pledge as a congregation to love and nurture fathers among us so that they can show your love in all that they do. Thanks for helping us to remember what it is to be a father or to have a father and to recognize the importance of fathers in our community. In that same vein, we are, are grateful for our graduates and we recognize the importance of of these young people in our community and all that they have to offer the world. We ask, Lord, that as they are moving on to different things, that doors would be open for them, that walls of protection would surround them, that they would gain friendships and um, new relationships, that they would draw near to you in times of joy and in times of concern and loneliness Thank you, God, for the many youth and young people in this church and their activity in the community and that which they have shown us through the years. We thank you, God, for the, the gift of summertime, for the, uh, <laughs> the beauty of exam week and the close of school. And we are reminded that that brings retirement for some, and so we say thank you for that, Lord. 
God, the beauty of this day around us, the created earth and that which we see and experience, and we give you thanks. When we're thinking about that creation, Lord, we're, we're concerned when things are happening to that which is so very beautiful. And when devastation comes through tornadoes or floods, so we lift up those dealing uh, with the path of storms, especially in Yellowstone National Park. God, for anyone who has felt the sting of of loss this week or the pain or discomfort of physical illness for those suffering from COVID, from those recovering and in need of healing or in rehab, we ask that you would be with them and that you would heal them, Lord. For Ryan and Pete and Lita specifically, we lift them to you for healing. God, there's a big, big world out there, one that you are caring for every minute of every day one that your people maybe are turning from you and doing things that maybe you wouldn't have chosen for us, Lord. So when our choices uh, seem to be creating unrest, when our choices are violent and angry, when our choices don't seem peace-filled or from you, Lord, I ask that you would once again help leaders of the world to see a more peaceful way. Lord, we lift up Ukraine to you this day and its people. God, in the stillness, in the quiet this morning, we know that you are here. Thank you once again for meeting us exactly where we are. Thank you for hearing the cries of our hearts. Thank you for oh, helping us to lift the joys and praising you with all that we can. For the, those things that we offer you this day, we give you thanks, Lord, and we leave them at your feet, praying as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So friends, we have two scripture passages today from Galatians and then from the Gospel of Luke. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 and following. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. And then in the Gospel of Luke, let me tell you, I wrestled with this one. I don't want to talk about demons and pigs on Father's Day, okay? So let's just read this together. We'll see where the sermon takes us. All right, Luke 8, verse 26 and following. Then they arrived at the country of the Gazarenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man in the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes. He had de did not live in a house, but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. 
Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Oh, happy Father's Day. Friends, when we think of redirection, I guess Father's Day, we could think of this too, is that when we think of redirection, we think of going the other way. I'm sure you've had time in your life when you've gone the other way, when you've tried a different path or you wanted to try again. In modern culture, there's a television series out right now that depicts the different paths, revealing the like what ifs. Like what if, you know, there's this one thing and if you went this way, this way, and how your life would unfold differently. The scripture today in the gospel is an invitation to reorient or refocus from the multi-voiced madness to the single call of Christ. Madness to stillness. In the Gospel reading, it's it's ironic that the legion of demons asked for a ride on the pigs instead of being sent into the abyss. Except as soon as they end up on those pigs, they end up in the abyss anyway. The very thing they wanted to avoid becomes their fate. But it is self-determined fate. And Jesus, as we note in the Gospel, lets them because they asked for that. How many times with anger or even with kindness have we said, no thanks Jesus, I've got this. 
I'll handle my own stuff, I'll ride my own pigs wherever they may take me. Fear tends to cause that reaction, that reaction of pushing God away. Fear tends to cause that. And then perhaps in our mistakes or our mess, in a turn-the-other-way moment, we ask, like the man in the narrative, like Legion, we ask, what would you do with me? What do you have to do with me? Which is really full of more questions. The questions behind the question. What changes will you affect in my life, Jesus? What growth will you seek for me, Jesus? What effort are you going to require of me, Jesus? And Jesus' response is, there's no requirement. Because Jesus just whispers again, I love you. The fear that pushes away becomes a love that desires us to move more closely toward the one who loves us. So Jesus and this man draw near to one another. But here's the thing. It, 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 the gospel like shows us that maybe they're going to stay together, that he's going to stay at his feet, that the crowds are going to come, and that this man's just going to hang out with him forever instead of being in the tombs, which, by the way, was graveyard like instead of hanging out in the graveyard naked and afraid and doing all these things that the society says don't do he turns to God the one who is telling him he loves him and he doesn't stay at least not in the way that the request was probably made instead like us his means of staying is by telling the story sharing what he has experienced with everyone he meets. He's been rescued from a life of despair. He lives a life of hope and joy now, and sharing the love of Jesus with all that he encounters is what is required of him. Not because Jesus actually puts that requirement upon him, but because in his return of loving him, he wants to do that. Having faced his madness, he finds the stillness of contentment. He now is in his right mind. He's clothed, as Luke says, and in his right mind. And that mind was focused on the mind of Christ. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, says, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. But what is this mind? It was a right mind, surely, a mind of longing, of serving, of hoping, and of following. But it is a mind of discipleship. It is a process of transformation, transformation that we seek for the world and for ourselves. And sometimes it feels like we're moving from madness to stillness, from sanity, right, in our right mind. But a mind that may seem like madness to a world bent on turning inward, to lifting up self above all other. Hmm. So, instead of lifting up self above all other, we lift up God through Jesus Christ. That's like making the right mind. To be a disciple is to be other-centered, outward-focused. It is to see all people even before seeing self. That's where the dads come in today. We have examples of this in our human life. Some of us have had relationships with our fathers that, that we realize, wow, they, I, my favorite story is at a graduation ceremony where the child was sent to a private school and the dad didn't buy shoes for like 12 years. The sacrifice was that he really couldn't afford to do school and shoes and new clothes and all that stuff. And when the, when the child asked him later on, of course, they were like, wow, you didn't buy new shoes just so I could go to school? We see that sacrificial love in people around us. Maybe in fathers. Maybe in guys that we know have that quiet contentment about them that show us that strength and that other outward focus. The problem is, like Legion, Legion had so many voices in his mind. I'm not even going to touch the whole demon thing. 
Legion had so many voices in his mind, so many things trying to, to distract him from the quiet. To understand the other, to understand that outward focus, to see other people before we see ourselves, we have to be quiet. We have to set ourselves aside and listen to a profound silence. This man in the cemetery in the country there was in a force of nature that needed and craved stillness. He moved from the earthquake of his madness to the silence of his right mind, a mind that was once again set on following Christ. Friends, I wonder when we will just get there. When will we take that madness, that, oh, those outer voices, and breathe in the silence? Moving from despair to hope, fear to mission, getting back to the work that God so desires us to engage in and to serve God with. Redirection, changing the way you're moving. Can we do that? Can we try it for a day or a week? Changing our focus, maybe for this time of worship. Maybe you came in and there was a lot of noise. Let's take our madness and indeed make it stillness. Friends, it is my prayer that it will be so for you and for me. Amen. Friends, we have one closing song to sing together. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing, You Are Good.
friends, indeed, God is good all the time. So as we go from this time of worshiping God, we are reminded to go forth in the hope and the love and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. And may you go in peace. See you next Sunday at 10 a.m.